Hey, it's Mike. Thanks for tuning back in. So everybody's talking about the TikTok ban on breaking. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about it. I know everybody is, and um, I don't. I don't have a ton to add here, except that uh, there's there's not a whole lot that we know about this yet. From what I see, it's only live breaking, and I don't. First of all, I don't use TikTok. I hate TikTok. It's not for me. My wife and daughter use TikTok, and my son too, and they send me TikTok videos, and ugh, I don't use it. So. I, this has zero impact on me immediately, um, but it made me wonder a lot of things about how it could impact what we do here. Uh, you know, my favorite person to follow, one of my favorite pers- people to follow on YouTube is Pac-Man. Just, I, I never buy any of those products, but I love watching him open packs. Uh, will that be banned if that TikTok ban comes over to YouTube? Now, it's only live. On, on TikTok, TikTok for now, surprise-based products, whatever that means. Packs are obviously part of that, um, but it says like you can't be- you can't break personal products. Uh, but it's only live, and so people are panicking. I don't know why you couldn't just do. And again, this might just be something to do with the TikTok platform. I don't know why you couldn't just do a recorded one and then post it. Uh, you know, like. Pac-Man isn't doing live box breaks for most of his videos. And I don't know, I assume he's on TikTok as well. But I know a lot of guys are doing live box breaks on TikTok and getting paid for them. But can't they just record them? I don't know. Let me know. I'm uh, Maybe this is stupid. I think that this was a really big missed opportunity for, for people to make the breaking news joke. Maybe not. Sports car dad talked about how we need more regulation in the industry, but he also said that he hates regulation. I'm not really sure where he stands on that. Uh, I don't know. I I think he he also made a good point that fanatics will will regulate braking to some extent. He even talked about regulation with the secondary market, which is really tough to imagine how that would work. I think a, a lot of this probably stems from the fact that TikTok is trying to avoid their own banishment as the US government tries to ban TikTok in the United States. I haven't followed that at all. I don't know anything about it, but I I would guess that this decision has something to do with that. They're trying to clean up their act. So, and this is just one of the ways that we hear about in our industry. I was recently offered $300 to do essentially a commercial for a certain company on uh, how how to do live auctions on TikTok. So, you know, this is a big deal. I, of course, rejected it. I still have not accepted a sponsor yet. Uh, Will, when the right opportunity comes along, I'd love to have a sponsor for the show. But this was one where they offered me $300 and they said it was negotiable. So I could have asked for more money. And uh, all I had to do was just do a, a video explaining how to do a live auction on on TikTok. So now that company, who has paid, and I've seen a lot of videos that people have done in the industry where they've been paid out by that company, that company's out. Like they can't, you can't do that anymore. And they've been paying probably tens of thousands of dollars to creators like me to do a commercial for them. So I'm, I'm really interested in that kind of thing. I do think that this, this announcement is, uh, is probably good for YouTube and good for us. If you have younger people, and I think it's mostly younger people who are who are um, doing breaks on TikTok. I might be wrong, but TikTok is for the kids. Uh, I know, and it's not really, but uh, will they, will these breakers come over to YouTube? Will they bring those kids with them? Uh, I found, I did a short last week, a YouTube short video, and it got 1,500 views in like five minutes. It just blew up. And the, the demographics of the viewers of that video were vastly different from the demographics of my standard video. And I'll put up here the differences between the two. The shorts viewers are much younger, as you would expect. It's, but I'm just showing you that it's validated. It's only one small sample size, one video. But comparing it against the average viewer of my last 28 days, uh, of like 55, 60,000 views, that one video got a lot of younger people watching. So if you see sports car people 
diving into shorts. That's why you know, you want to get those younger people. I would love to bring younger people into the vintage hobby, into pre-war, into collecting at all. And so it, that's a it's a really appealing thing to me. But um, you know, I, breaking on TikTok has no impact to me, except that I think it could be good for us on YouTube. And I don't think, and I saw the collectibles guru, Eric Whiteback, speculated that YouTube and Instagram will follow in the next 24 months. I don't know. Why, why would they? And even if they do, is it, is it only live? And if it is only live, then that has no impact on me. Uh, also, I don't do any breaks, but imagine if they do, if they were to ban uh, non-live, so recorded videos of pack breaks. What happens to Pac-Man? I've done some pack breaks, even the 1980s packs, where I'll just open a 1982 Tops pack, gets huge views. People love those things here on YouTube, but I just, I don't understand why you would, if I, if I am opening a 1982 Tops pack for myself, I guess the challenge would be, how do I prove that it's for myself and I'm not just doing, using like code words where it's, a, it's actually a break, a box break that people have bought into and um, I'm just not saying it's a box break. So I'm, I'm recording it and I use code words. I don't know. It seems crazy, but let me know what do you think. Is this good or bad for us here in the sports card hobby here on YouTube? I'm really curious. You guys always have really good thoughts. Let me know. Thanks for watching.